Welcome to another edition of the Gridiron Report. I'm Jared Johnson and I'm coming to you from my home office. Hope everybody out there is being safe. And what we're talking about today are the big uglies up front for the Red Raiders. Uh, Texas Tech picked up a huge commitment. They added grad transfer Josh Berger from Wolford. And people say, okay, Wolford, where is that? It is an FCS school. So I think most people would be like, ooh, an FCS edition, is that a big deal? Well, look. Let me, let me just give you some background on what Texas Tech is getting in, in Josh Berger. First of all, uh, he's 6'4", 290, and that's legit. He was a two-year starter at Wolford. He uh, started the last 25 games there. He also played in 13 games as a redshirt freshman. Um, but prior to that, uh, he comes from Ohio, Aurora, Ohio, where uh, he was a three-time starter, all-state performer on the gridiron. He was also a uh, three-time All-American as a wrestler, so which I always like. I mean, anybody, anytime we're talking about either an offense or defense alignment, maybe even a linebacker, uh, I, mean, I want to hear about that wrestling background because, I mean, come on, that kind of country strong or Midwestern strong as it may be, uh, I mean, it, you can't teach that. So, and, and, and that technique and all that, just learning to grapple, um, especially someone who's a three-time All-American, I mean, that's going to help out on the gridiron. Now, you know, Josh Berger was a guy he had offers from Indiana, South Florida, and several other Division I schools sniffing around. So this doesn't come out of nowhere. It was actually a huge gift for Texas Tech. The Red Raiders have been searching through the, the transfer portal uh, for, for months, honestly, looking for that experienced guy to add to the offensive line. Because, look, the Red Raiders lost three multi-year starters from a year ago from their offensive line, including both tackles, Terrence Steele and Travis Bruffy. So they needed some. They needed an infusion of some experience, and that's exactly what they get in Berger. And I think Berger is going to start at right tackle for the Red Raiders. And then when you start looking at the offensive line, which honestly going into spring ball, I think was one of the biggest questions. I wouldn't say one of the biggest concerns, but one of the biggest questions in terms of there are some guys that we that we so we've seen play and we know can play, but are they going to gel? Are they going to mesh? How good could this offensive line be? Because as many of y'all know out there, that's where it all starts for football is in the trenches. You have, you have to have a quality offensive line to really have a quality offense. So, um, and especially if your quarterback is going to be, say, Alan Bowman, uh, who isn't, uh, the, you know, the fastest runner. He isn't the most elusive guy. Um, and then Maverick McIver is uh, another option for you, a quarterback, who was a dual threat coming out of high school, but he's also a guy who's uh, suffered serious leg and foot injuries. So, you need that offensive line. Now, I mentioned there's some guys that, uh, you know, going into spring ball, you, we all felt like, okay, we know these guys can play. I'm going to tell you who they are right now. It starts with Jack Anderson. He's been a uh, all-Big 12 performer in the past, but he's coming off uh, a couple of injury-riddled years. Now, two years ago, he played with a pretty bad shoulder injury. And last year, I mean, it cost him most of the season, uh, you know, another shoulder injury. So, uh you hope Jack Anderson come back, be healthy, and be that All Big Twelve. Uh, you know he was a five star blue chip guy coming out of high school. I hope he can be like that. He can be that for you next season. You know, and then you look at Dawson Deaton at center, who, uh, interestingly enough, I think most of you, most Ritter fans out there, know by now that he played high school ball there with Jack Anderson at Frisco. Uh, but Dawson Deaton, you know, was a pretty highly rated guy coming out of high school in his own right. And, uh, I mean, he had a tremendous season last year, quietly, because this offensive line, and Tech only won four games. But he took over there for Paul Stowers at, uh, you know, two-year starter at center. And I think Dawson Deaton did a tremendous job. I, I think it's a really bright future for Dawson Deaton there at center. I think possibly maybe even at the next level if he keeps it going. Um, but I, he's a huge part of, you know, anchor of that offensive line there at center. I really like, I think it starts with him and Jack there. I think those two guys really help solidify what you want to do up front. And you got, like I said, Berger at right tackle. So you look pretty good there on the right side. On the left side, I think Western Wright, a guy who started eight games in place, uh, mostly a right guard for Jack Anderson last year. You know, he was a highly, uh, another highly rated guy, high three-star guy coming out of high school. And, you know, he looked good. He held up. I don't remember, but, oh, Western Wright let his guy, you know, get a sack or, oh, blow him. Blown block by Western. I don't, you know, I just don't remember seeing that. And watching his uh, his tape, I think you should. There was some inexperience, but I think also you see, okay, you know, this guy can can create a push. This guy is uh, athletic enough to uh, help in terms of protecting the passer, you know, and, and, and pass pro from his guard position, you know. And then I think at left tackling, this is where. 
I think most of the concern is going to be, as usual, left tackle protecting the quarterback's, your right-handed quarterback's blind side. But uh, Casey Verholz, now look, he played a couple of games for Terrence Steele. He started a couple of games for Terrence Steele at right tackle last year. And, I, you know, I, I think he, he held up well. Um, I Talking with the coaches, I know they're really high on Casey Verholz. And I, I, I would be very surprised if he wasn't your starting left tackle next year. So I, I, I'm very happy with those five guys. I feel like... They're going to be a pretty good group. And it's going to be interesting to see what somebody else can do. Now, the past guys, they were good players. You know, Terrence Steele might play in the NFL. He's expected to be drafted here pretty soon. You know, and uh, Travis Bruffy was a very good player. Mass and Akimnanu started for like four years for you, basically. So uh, those guys did a lot for you. But I'm just interested in see some, to see something new, see what the, this fresh blood can do. And I think they're going to do a good job. But you also, you're, you're always going to need depth. You're going to lose guys. Guys are going to go down to injury or whatnot. And so who is that going to be? Who are the guys who are going to step up? Well, I think Texas Tech will still look to add somebody, possibly uh, through the transfer portal, if they can. But if not, they also they added uh, through the junior college ranks as a midterm enrollee in Ethan Carr. is a huge 6'8 behemoth. Um, I think he's a guy who can, can help with depth. I think along those same lines, another ginormous human being is Trevor Roberson. I th- uh, Coach Wells mentioned him this spring before everything got shut down that he was showing some flashes he's a, you know a ginormous person who can play tackle or even some guard coach will said so which that would be interesting to see get maybe, perhaps get quite the push there from your guard position and i think zach adams is the guy he's a senior been here a long time he's someone we heard about in spring who's come on uh it would have been nice to see him get the full spring and really get to see him uh hit some people in live action it would be nice if we would have gotten to see that um but you know, Will Farrar is another guy who, uh, you know, you hear about, you know, you know can provide some depth, especially on the interior there, maybe at center, or, you know, at the guard spot. So I think there are some pieces. They lost a lot last year. There's no doubt. You know, they lost a lot from last year. But um, there are some guys that, due to injuries to some of the starters last year, you know, were able to uh, get some experience, you know, get out there and play quality Big 12 competition. And so they'll have that to build upon for next season. Added in with Berger, you know, Jack Anderson coming back from injury, you know, uh, Ethan Card, like I said, from the junior college ranks. All of a sudden, you start to see the, the picture at the offensive line, and you feel pretty good about what they're going to have next year. So with that, I want to thank you for watching, and until next time.